guys and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle Series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule sets of the VGC 2018 season. Well, not for very much longer, because Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are coming out. So we kicked off the week yesterday with this Whimsicott kind of centered team, playing Whimsicott, Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Celesteela, Crocodile, and Alola Marowak. So, do keep your comments coming um, about what you think of the team. If there's any areas that you think, ooh, that looks a bit iffy. How do you deal with this? Um, let me know. Because um, I am super intrigued to hear your opinions. And um, we've got our first opponent of the day. Yang from the United Kingdom, I'm, I'm sure it said. Um, and running a team of Primarina, Tentacruel, Polyrath. Lantern, look at that clicked in already. Araquanid and Stormy. So my opponent knowing exactly what he wants to do against this team. So Tapu Koko here, obviously very good. We've got to be a bit careful with the Lantern because it's probably got Volt Absorb, you've got to imagine. Um, so we're going to have to go about dealing with that in a different kind of way. Marowak here is not really going to want to kind of come to this match. I think Tapu Finney's not bad. We do need to be a bit careful with that um, Tentacruel, obviously, because of the, the Sludge Bomb and things like that that could potentially come out from it. Uh, Crocodile again. Hmm. Probably doesn't want to come here, but I think Whimsicott isn't bad. Tapu Koko isn't bad. Celesteela Finney is probably the best kind of call for this fall. Although, you know, the Crocodile is quite nice for that Lantern and Tentacruel. If we can get it in a Tailwind, it might be better than Celesteela, to be honest. So, let us see. Um, hmm. I think let's go Whimsicott. Um, let's go Tapu Finny, Tapu Coco, and Crocodile. And lock in because we have got the sunny day on our whimsicott which is going to kind of help us a lot against this uh, water mono water team so it should be quite good i feel like as we're going into the last couple of weeks of of this format as well we're probably going to see a lot more kind of fun teams rather than serious teams on the ladder so it should be quite interesting to see and we might see some new kind of quirky strategies that we've not seen before as well so it'll be interesting to see we do see my opponent here lead off with that Starmie and Araquanid and we lead off with our Tapu Fini and our Windicott so we do get the Misty Terrain up um, because there's no Tapus on my opponent's side of the field it kind of makes it a lot easier for us so hmm what do we expect I think huh, I kind of don't really know what to expect from the Starmie and I wonder if we're better off going for a sunny day straight away and just a, um, a calm mind. And then if Wimmy gets through this turn, should do. I mean, we're probably not going to see water type attacks come on to either target here. So that's the thing. Um, we might be better off just getting a tailwind up while we can. And just a calm mind as well with our Finny. Let's do that. Because we don't want to lose Wimmy before we even manage to get a Tailwind off, so... Oh dear, I think I know what's coming. I think Trick Room's coming from the Stormy. We've totally overlooked that. Oh no. It blatantly is. Poison Jab coming out from Araquanid into Whimsicott. Gonna take us down to our Sash. There's no worries about being poisoned because of the Misty Terrain and there's the Trick Room. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um. So I think before Wimmy kind of makes a swift exit here, we'll go for a sunny day and um, there's probably every possibility that our rack when it goes for a poison jab into our Tapu Fini here. So I think I want to protect and it also gives us like a nice way to kind of just stall the trick room a little bit. <clears throat> Lantern coming in. Now this wouldn't be so bad if, if we get the, the, if Wimmy goes down here. So there's the sunny day. Sleep pranks are coming in quite handy for that. And where's this poison jab coming into? It is into the finny this time. So, hmm. I think we've got to 
pretty free switch into Crocodile here and we're getting Intimidate off as well. So we'll go for that and we can't really protect here. Um, could potentially get doubled into though. Um, I think I'll go for a Moonblast into a Raquanid. We kind of just need to see out these Trick Room turns to be honest. So we get the Intimidate off, more importantly onto that Araquanid. Lower the damage output of that Poison Jab that we're going to see into Finny here, you've got to imagine. But no, into Crocodile, because we're probably going to see a Thunderbolt. Oh, an Ice Beam doubling into that slot. No. Okay. Maybe expecting the Finny to switch out here. But we get away super lightly there, because we can just... I feel like double protecting. Hmm, do we double protect here? I think we protect Crocodile for sure. And, hmm. I feel like going for another Moonblast into the Araquanid with the Finny. Because we'd probably see a Poison Jab come into the Finny now. But because of the Intimidate, oh, we don't. So, Leech Life into the Crocodile and Ice Beam into that Crook as well. Okay, so that helps us out massively. Gonna get another Moon Blast into this Araquanid and get a special attack drop, which doesn't make too much difference. Um, what's my opponent got? He's got the Stormy. So, we probably. Um, we could bring in Tapu Koko there. It'll be able to take all the attacks and kind of keep Crocodile alive till later on in the game. Yeah, let's do that. And then we can cycle Intimidate once again. And let's just protect Finny this time around. Just in case we do see an electric type attack come in on that slot. Especially with the electric terrain coming in to play now. So I'll leech life into the core core. We're gonna see an ice beam as well into that slot. Yeah, so we could we could have really got away with an attack there with, with Finny. But the dimensions do turn back to normal now, um, and we can just dazzle and gleam. We should pick up the kill onto the Araquanid. And we can Moonblast into the Lantern. I wonder if the Lantern specs. Oh, it can't be, because the damage output that it's doing is not massive. It's just it's never really deviated away from an Ice Beam. Ah, oh, let's go for it. I mean, hopefully we don't lose. Finny here to an electric type attack. So Dazzling Gleam coming out, picking up the KO onto a Raquanid. And Moonblast. Lantern's pretty bulky, so I'm not really sure if this will pick up the KO. Yeah, it's not. But we do get a special attack drop, which is huge. And we see a Skull come out. So Cock are going to take that. But it does pick up a burn in the process, which is a little bit unfortunate. The sun does fade. <clears throat> But if that Starmie comes in, at least we can outspeed it. And I'd be kind of tempted to double into it because it might have a Sash. You've got to think that with it being a Trick Room setter as well. But we just see Primarina come in. So I think it will go for a T-Ball into it. And I'll just go for a Moonblast into the Lantern really. There's no reason not to. Like a Life Orb Thunderbolt here onto the Primarina should pick up the KO, you've got to imagine. Protect coming out from Lantern, Primarina, Protect. So my opponent trying to just stall on that Tapu Koko so the burn damage kind of takes it all the way down. But we've got one more turn. Or we might have two more turns really. So. Let's just go for the exact same play again. And we should be able to lock this up. I mean, with Wimmy in the back as well, we can bring it in on the, on the Starmie. 
from Marina going for another protect. It does fail. Tap Coco getting the Thunderbolt off. With the life orb damage though, we will go down. So we will lose Coco here. But it's going to be three on one going into <clears throat> this last turn against that Stormy. So worthy sacrifice of Coco there. Moonblast picking up the KO there. <clears throat> and it's Stormy versus the world, unfortunately. So we'll bring in Wimmy. We're probably better off as well just thinking about just going for a taunt onto the Stormy. Um, because it's likely that it might have something like Recover as well. It has access to it, so... And we definitely don't want to, you know, it's got access to stuff like, uh, it's a cosmic power as well. And so it could stop, like, boosting up and we just don't even want to entertain that. So, if we can just shut it down, that will help us out a million times more than a potential Tailwind. And there's always a chance if we Tailwind, it could just go for another Trick Room, which wouldn't be ideal. Even though Finny's probably slower than it under a Trick Room, so... It's probably unlikely that it will go for it at this point. It's my opponent just taking his time, thinking through what he wants to do. The other thing we could have just done was double attack into it because we know Whimsicott's faster than Stormy. You know, it's, it's base 116, Stormy's base 115. Um, <clears throat> but like I say, there's always, like, it could survive and then just start setting up. Yeah, so there's a rain dance coming out from it. Although I, I don't think going to help it too much. And we can just double into it now with the Whimsicott with a Moonblast. And that should be enough along with the Moonblast from ourselves. We know it can't protect or anything like that. So my opponent just forfeits. And very good game to my opponent. And a really fun team to kind of go up against to open the day today. So, excellent. Let's move on. And um, I don't think we've featured the Celestela yet, which is quite interesting. But I'm sure we will at some point. Um, it's just your regular old standard Celestela. I didn't really think of it like... To change that up too much, it was in there just for specific reasons, um, so I didn't really see any need. We could have run wide guard on it, um, but I just felt like flamethrower was a better option on it. Just because we've only really got the Marowak, and sometimes Marowak isn't... You can't always bring Marowak to certain games, and then Celesteela fits in a lot better, you know. Um, so just having that additional coverage is quite helpful, especially against something like Cortana that can cause his team quite a few problems because it hits a lot of stuff for pretty good damage um, we've got Coco obviously out speeding it and then we've got Intimidate but outside of that we've not got too many options and it's it, it could be a little problematic so that was kind of one of the main reasons as well but we've got our next opponent of the day running a team of Metagross, Milotic, uh, Tapu Bulu um, forgive me I'm a bit slow today um, Togodomaru, Pelipper, and Salamence. So, we've probably got a Bulldoze um, strategy built in here with our Bulldoze weakness policy Metagross. We've got um, the competitive ability that we need to be a little bit careful for with our Crocodile because we don't want to just activate that. There's the Togodomaru um, and the Rain as well. But I do think that um, Marowak will be very good here. Um, Whimsicott as well. Though we have to be a bit careful for that that kind of fake out from the Togo tomorrow. It could be a little bit awkward, but we can play to that with our Marowak a little bit. Um, hmm. Maybe Finn. Oh. Tapu Koko is a bit awkward to bring here. Like We want to bring it, but the Togo tomorrow really kind of makes it super awkward for us to bring. Hmm. Let's bring Finny. We definitely want Marowak. Um, I think we need Tapu Koko, to be honest, for terrain control as well. But then again, kind of want maybe Celestila over Tapu Koko, just because of the Tapu Bulu can be pretty threatening otherwise. Um, 
so let's see let's see maybe the tapu Koko was the better option there um, we will soon find out but I think we can probably manage all right without it so Pelipa coming out so there's no um, risk of fake out here from ourselves um, And I wonder if we're going to just see a bulldoze come out from this element straight away, the Pelipper switch out. Hmm. So there's the drizzle bringing the rain. I think here we, well, hmm. Let's go for a sunny day. First of all, it lowers the accuracy on, on Hurricane that the Pelipper could potentially throw out at us. Um, and secondly, it gets rid of the rain, which is quite good for us in this position. Um, although it does benefit the Tapu Fini. Um, we see the Salamence switch out for my opponent and Togodomaru come in. So it is floating on a balloon. We do get the sunny day off, so get rid of that rain which is nice and we're going to see Carmine from us and potentially a Tailwind or maybe a Hurricane as well but maybe a Tailwind to kind of match ours possibly in Tailwind from the Pelipper so what I'm going to do here is because you've got to imagine that the, the Togodomaru wants to um, fake out into the Whimsicott to prevent maybe an Encore into that Pelipper slot. So I'll switch in my uh, Marowak for Whimsicott and I'm just going to go for a, hmm, do a Moonblast. The Pelipper's more likely to have the Sash I think, especially with Bulu in the team, I think supporting the, the Togunamaru. So let's go for the Pelipper and break the potential Sash there. But it is withdrawing what we're going to see come in, Salamence. So we're going to catch it with a plus one Moonblast, which is pretty nice. He's going to get an Intimidate off. And let's see. I mean, the Togodomaru could potentially just go for a fake out into the Finny now. Because with the switch out from the Pelipper, it makes a bit more sense. Zing Zap. Oh, and it reveals that we're not Lightning Rod as well. So that is going to be pretty interesting going into the next <clears throat> few turns. But we do get the Moonblast off into Salamence. Ah, so close with that KO. And you've got to imagine this Salamence is um, an Earthquake variant, for sure. Hmm. And of course we know that the, the Togunamaru is not... Um, it's not Sash, because we know it's floating on the balloon. Ooh, now what do we do? I wonder if we see a Tech Rage come out from the Salamence. That's always the question. Hmm. What have we got? Oh, we've got Celesteela, haven't we? Which isn't ideal. So we can't really afford to... Let's bring in Celeste. Ah, oh, too late, too late, too late. Salamence withdrawing. We're not going to see an Earthquake this time come around. We're going to see the Pelipper come in. Maybe the Togodomaru just protects here. So we protect with Finny. Zing Zap coming out. Yep. And Flare Blitz into Togodomaru. Gotta be. Oh, into the Pelipper. Hmm. I think that timeout's really kind of caught us off guard there, so that isn't really good. Let's think about this a bit better going into this following turn. So let's protect Marowak. And let's bring in Winnie on the Tapu Fini slot. We will lose our Calm Mind boost, but I think in the end it'll kind of aid us a little bit better. Hopefully we just take a, um, a Zing Zap into that slot. If my opponent doubles into it, then that's not going to be ideal. There's a Zing Zap. 
into the Wimmy, breaking the sash, and where are we gonna see Scald into the Marak? Okay. So Tailwind pitters out for my opponent. Hmm. Kind of tempted just to go for a flare blitz into the Togodomaru, but the thing is, you could just protect here. We might be better off going for Shadowborn into the Pelipper and just Sunny Daying. But we'll probably, yeah, the Pelipper's just going to withdraw. Is the Salamence coming in? Yeah. But we will pick up the KO onto the Salamence. We're kind of wasting the Sunny Day though. And we could have just went for the Chaos straight onto that Togodomaru, which is a little bit of an annoying thing. Zing Zap into, is it into the Marowak maybe? Yeah. So we pick up the Chaos onto the Salamence. Hmm. What are we going to see come in? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something like maybe the Metagross come in. Yeah. And then the Togodomaru wanting to switch out for that Pelipper straight away. But one thing I could do is just protect Marowak and go for a Tailwind with Wimmy. Although we probably would lose Wimmy doing that, to be honest. Um... Because hmm. the Metagross could have Earthquake as well. Let's go Tailwind, regardless. So yeah, there's the, the switch. So we could have went for that. <clears throat> we could have went for the sunny day play there. Hmm. Slightly unfortunate. But it'll depend what this Metagross goes for. Marak protecting. Metagross is going to probably just go for a Meteor Mash into the Wimmy. Yeah. Does connect. And picks up the kill. Okay. So we still have Finny, to be honest, so that's not too bad. And we've got the rain up. Because I think a Shadow Bond will take down the Pelipper. And then we can Muddy Water into the Metagross. And we're not activating the weakness policy. Like, I'm pretty confident, like, a Shadow Bond will pick up the KO there. Let's see. So Metagross just protecting. So as long as our Muddy Water hits, if the Shadow Bone doesn't pick up the kill, then this Pelipper's going down and we, we stop any chance of um, Tailwind set up from this Pelipper. So yeah, getting a crit, but I don't think it matters at this point because your Shadow Bone is going to be always picking up that kill regardless. So now we've got the Togo tomorrow to come in. Hmm. And the Togodomaru really has to fake out the Finny, really, doesn't it? But we want to get rid of the Togodomaru, really, before we do anything else. So I'm going to just double into the Togodomaru here. Because it might even go for no, yeah, no fake out. So we do hit the muddy water. Because if we get rid of the Togodomaru, it means that Celesteela can come in the next, what if we lose everything and then clean up from there. So Shadowborn into the Togodomaru, pick up the KO. And even if things go like terribly wrong here, we've got, we've got Celesteela to come in. 
and kind of be the cleanup crew. So do take a Meteor Mash from that Metagross, lose our Finny, but like I say, we've got the Celesteela here to come in. We can Leech Seed the Metagross, um, and we've got Flamethrower when the, the rain stops, so we're pretty safe, I think. So let's Shadow Bond, because I think a Shadow Bond, even from this range, will pick up the KO onto Metagross. We might just see it protect you. It's still like the last turn of Tailwind. It's going to give my opponent the best chance he can to try and come back from this position. Yeah. Because the Tailwind will end this next turn. Um, but... I mean, let's just detect here and go for Elite Seed into the Metagross. And I think the rain ends this next turn after after this one, so... I mean, the Metagross probably has to attack into the Marowak at this point. Yeah. But just going for that Meteor Mash. <clears throat> and the rain stops. And we might see a forfeit come out here, possibly. But hopefully not. I kind of want Marowak to deal the the final blow. But we'll see. So Shadowbone, we actually outspeed the Metagross as well, which is nice. And pick up the KO there. So we didn't need to protect the, the turn previous to that. But it was just playing a little bit safer because we hadn't seen any other move selections at that point. Maybe it was banded, but I don't know. Um, regardless of that, very good game to my opponent. And a nice win to take us into tomorrow's episode so we will wrap things up there guys thank you so much for tuning in and watching i um i hope you've enjoyed today's episode if you have as always please leave a like on the video just drop one down there it does massively help the channel out um if you're new to the channel do subscribe because we have a ton of vgc centric content on the channel and we will have lots of ultra sun and moon content coming as soon as those games do drop so that's going to be really exciting i'm really excited for the new games coming out and it's only a matter of weeks now like i mentioned in yesterday's episode as well we've only got a couple of weeks after this one to actually um play some more more teams so um i do want to play the eevee team extreme evo boost team in the very last week before we go into ultra sun and ultra moon um so we've got space for one more team now we had a great suggestion from johnny yesterday about uh, dragon dance salamence and i think that's a really cool idea so let me know what your thoughts are on that or if you have other ideas that you'd like to see in that kind of in between week um or we could just play this team for another week but i think it would be nice to play two different teams one each week and then we can kind of go into uh, ultra sun and ultra moon on a high we can give the this format a nice send off because it has been a lot of fun but we will be back tomorrow with another episode of our school of hard knocks we'll be back tomorrow with our best of three battler and our battle spot double series so lots to going on tomorrow and then obviously thursday we've got the stream we've got the viewer battles on thursday um so that'll be eight p.m uk time and i think it's just greenwich mean time now no plus one now because the clocks over here in england have went back so we haven't got the plus one anymore it's just Stand it all Greenwich Mean Time, and that's until next Easter time, I think. So that um, is a little bit confusing, but um, for people outside the UK, it's like daylight savings time, so it's all kicked in now. Anyway, I'm going to stop going on. Thank you as always for tuning in, guys. Hope you're having an amazing Tuesday. Um, whatever you're up to, make sure you're taking care of yourselves, having fun, and I will see you all for another fun-packed episode tomorrow. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye!